Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Mass, and I'm an application engineer here at Allied PLM Solutions. I'd like to welcome you to this afternoon's Launch Bytes webinar, where we're going to explore some capabilities of the patterning command within the NXCAD software. Here at Allied PLM, we like to keep end users up to date on the latest developments with the engineering software products we support. One of the ways we do that is by hosting afternoon sessions such as this one. The Launch Bytes webinar series is designed to explore capabilities within NX that are often overlooked. Future sessions will be delivered once a month, usually on the second Thursday of each month at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Previously recorded sessions can be found on our website at www.allyplm.com. There you will also find upcoming Lunch Bite topics and dates. We want our Lunch Bites to be valuable to you, so please let us hear your suggestions on topics we should cover via email. We have several of you on the line with us today, therefore you will be in listen-only mode. Should you have any questions regarding today's material, feel free to write them down, email them to me directly at paul.mass at allyplm.com. Patterning function is new in NX8 and will help designers to be more efficient when it comes to reproducing features and shapes in the 3D modeling application. Experienced NX users may be familiar with the instance feature command, which is available in earlier versions of NX. The instance feature command allowed, allowed us to create circular and rectangular arrays with ease. Now in NX8, developers have increased the options available to us when creating arrays. We now refer to these arrays as patterns. For today's agenda, we will explore the different types of patterns available to us, the options which define the pattern, as well as the patterning methods and output settings. After exploring the different types of patterns we can create, we will look at a few real-world examples of how the patterning command will make life easier for us as designers. So as uh, we can see on the first slide here, the, the picture on top shows the different types of uh, linear patterns, which was previously known as a rectangular array. Uh, those are the first type of patterns we'll be looking at. And then in the lower picture, we have, starting from the left, a circular pattern. Uh, the one in the middle is going to be the be the polygon pattern, and then the one on the right will be the spiral pattern. So let's get started by going into NX8. Here we can see the first example. I basically just have three uh, plates with a boss at each corner. To access the pattern feature command, I want to come up here to insert drop down menu, down to the associative copy flyout menu and then choose my command pattern feature. Within the pattern feature uh, toolbar or command, uh, we can have the, the layout drop down shows us which kind of pattern we want to create. For this first example, we're going to be doing linear patterns. Currently, I, do, I just want to have my boundary set to none. When I have my boundary set to none, I'm able to define the spacing and directions I want this pattern to be created. The first thing I need to do is select which feature I want to pattern. I'm going to pattern this boss. The next thing I want to do is specify my first direction. I'm going to have it be this edge. Notice it jumps to specify my second direction. I can specify that vector by selecting this edge. And notice it shows a preview of what my pattern currently is. As far as spacing options are concerned, I have three different options available to me. Well, four, really. I'm going to cover three of them. Count and pitch is what it's set to now. Uh, the count is how many instances I want to create. The pitch is the distance between each instance. Count and span is going to be the number over which distance I want to apply that. Notice when we're on the count and span option that the pitch would be the resultant. So as I drag my span distance longer. Notice I still have the same count as 5, but the distance is now longer, and the resultant is the pitch in between each instance. I could also choose it to be pitch and span, where my span will be constant at 2 inches, and as I drag, in this instance it's 2 inches is the span. As I drag that, every multiple of 2 I'm going to get another count. So in that case, the count is the resultant. For this example, I'm going to leave it to the first option of count and pitch. 
I'm going to have a count of five with two inches in between each. If I want to show my result, I can get a preview of what that's going to look like. Now let's talk about our boundary options. Currently I have the boundary set to none. If I selected that, set that to a curve boundary, and come down here and select my curves, I want to put connected curves, notice that it's going to create that pattern inside that boundary. We can see the preview of the little yellow blocks there showing us where our instances are going to end up. I can, I can choose it to be exclude. Now if I pick these curves, it's going to create that pattern according to my spacing options and fill that in excluding the boundary that I chose by those curves. Another neat thing with the pattern command which gives us a lot of functionality is that if I want one instance beat to be different, I can right click on that specific instance and suppress it simply means that it is going to create that instance but we're not going to see it show up. It's, it's basically going to be turned off. It will create it over in our part navigator assembly tree but it will be suppressed. I can delete it meaning that it will not create that instance at all. If I clock it basically that means that I can move this particular instance. Let's say I wanted to move it 0.5 inches in the x direction 0.5 inches up in the y direction, it will notice that the location of that particular instance is going to be clocked differently than the other instances. I'm also able to create a variance of a specific instance by right clicking and do specify variance. This allows me to edit the parameters that are going to determine what that instance is. So let's say I wanted this particular instance to have maybe a height of five inches. And let's say I want the diameter to be three quarters of an inch. Once I have all my options set, and notice that the, the instance that has a variance applied to it has now gone from a yellow block to a green triangle or a green cone. Once I have all the options set, I can select OK and we'll see that my pattern's been created with this particular instance being clocked to a different location and a variance applied giving it a different height and diameter. Next thing I want to cover are the different types of pattern layouts that we can apply to a pattern. Again I'm going to have this be a linear pattern. I'm going to select my boss as the feature. I'm going to choose the face this time for my boundary. And notice that I have simplified boundary fill toggled on here. When I have that toggled on, I'm able to come down to the simplified layout. The only thing I have to define now is the pitch distance. I'm going to leave that at 2. But let's look at the other options available to us. I can have the layout, the fill layout set to triangle. We can see the the resultant from that by the little yellow blocks there, or I can have it set to diamond. I'm able to rotate my pattern if I want. Again, I can create, I can increase or decrease the pitch distance. Select OK when I have all my options set. So before those, those type of fill options of the diamond and triangle weren't available to us in a rectangular array, uh, now these options allow us to create more complex patterns uh, with just a few clicks of the button. Next thing I'd like to take a look at, another option in the linear pattern. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose the boss as my feature choose this face as my boundary. This time I just want to keep it to a square layout. And I want to show how we can apply pattern increments. 
this is going to increment the pattern as each instance grows. So if I want to specify my parameters there, let's say in direction one, the x direction, I want the diameter to grow by an eighth of an inch on each increment. Let's say in the y direction, direction two, I want the height to grow maybe a half of an inch. Once I have that set, I can select OK. Another thing I want to take a look at while we're on this example is a variational versus simple. Variational is going to give me more options for my output setting. It also does more checking and is, uh, creates a more intelligent pattern. We can select multiple features when doing a variational pattern, whereas a simple is a faster pattern creation metal method, but we can only pick one feature at a time, and there won't be as much intelligence behind it. I'm going to choose to select var variational. Instead of pattern feature for the output setting like we've had the last two patterns, this time I'm going to say copy features into a feature group. This way over my part navigator tree, they will be seen, we will see multiple bosses created as, a, as opposed to instances. I'm going to go ahead and select OK to create my pattern. And we'll notice that in the X direction, the diameter has increased by an eighth of an inch every increment. And in the Y direction, the height has increased a half of an inch as we specified in the increment options. So there, there's just some of the different types of linear patterns we can create. Notice over here in our part navigator tree that the first two patterns we created were instance patterns. We just have multiple instances here. We are able to go back and update those if we want. We can come down here. It's, it's similar to doing a variance. We could add, you know, change the height there, maybe the two, and we'll see that particular instance grow in height. That one right there. If I don't, if I were to double click on that, I would go back into my uh, pattern feature dialog where I could edit the pattern. Notice on the last one though, we toggled our option to copy the feature into a feature group. It created bosses instead of pattern instances. The other type of patterns that are available to us are circular, polygon, and spiral. Here in this example you can see I have three disks, each with a shape extruded and subtracted uh, from them. The first pattern we're going to look at is the circular pattern. I want to set my layout to circular. I'm going to select my feature as this extrude. I'm going to leave my boundary to none. Then I want to specify my rotation vector. I'm going to have it be the Z. And then I'm going to specify the center of where I want it to rotate about, and I want it to be the center point of the disk. So typically it would just create those instances, that center ring. But under here, under my radiate options, I can toggle on create concentric members. And then we can see that it's going to create three concentric members with a pitch distance of 25 millimeters apart. The pitch distance in this case is the distance between each concentric member. I can choose to rotate that if I want, or the span angle. I can also select it to stagger the angle. We'll see that there the middle concentric member is now staggered at a half angle. Another thing I want to do is uh, show you the difference between orientation, same as input versus follow pattern. We'll leave it as same as input right now and preview our result. 
if I leave it same as input as the base feature, we can see all the arrows still point up that they did not uh, rotate or follow the cylinder. If I want those to follow the pattern, I just toggle follow pattern on, select OK here and we'll see the difference. Notice the arrows rotate with the pattern. Uh, the second ring is staggered at a half angle. So those are just some of the options in our circular pattern. The next pattern we'll take a look at, at is the polygon pattern. I'm going to select my layout to polygon, select my feature as this extrude shape there. This time I'm going to set my boundary to the face. And my options here are the number of sides for my polygon. We do get dynamic feedback. As I change that, I'll see the shape of my polygon change. I'm going to leave it set to 5. Spacing options. We either get pitch alongside, meaning the distance between each instance, or count per side. I'm going to leave that set to count per side. I want four per side. We can select OK. Now, in this case, the pattern did, or the feature, the instances did follow the pattern, so we kind of have those rotated as it goes along the pattern. If I wanted to change that, I could hit an undo. This time I'll just leave it the same as input. Still need to set my boundary as this face. Now select OK. And we'll see that the orientation of that base feature stayed the same throughout the pattern. <clears throat> Next thing we'll take a look at is the spiral pattern option. In this case, we're just going to pattern that simple hole there in the center of the disk. I'm going to set my layout to spiral. Select my features at center hole. Boundary is going to be the face again. And notice that it throws a preview out there for us. I have the option of whether I want that to be a left-handed spiral or right-handed. The radial pitch is basically the distance between each spiral. And the pitch along spiral is going to be the distance between each instance. Another quick little tip or trick that I would like to show is that anytime we're inside of a command, we can simply hit F1 to access the help. All I did there was hit F1. We noticed that the, the top of our thing up here it said activating help, and it pulled up my help screen for the pattern feature. So if you have documentation loaded for NX, and, anytime, and that works for any command, or any option. Anytime you hit F1, it's going to pull up uh, the help for selected text or whichever command you're in. So now that we've seen the different types of patterns available to us, uh, let's take a look at how these would help us out in real world applications. One pattern we didn't get to take a look at was the pattern along curve. Uh, for this example, I basically have some type of machine cover here. Maybe it's covering a couple pulleys and a belt system. And we've created offset curves going around the flange of this machine cover. And I've only cre I've created one simple hole at the 3 o'clock position, at least when we're looking at it like this. And now I want to pattern that hole around that curve equally spaced. So I'm going to select my feature as this simple hole. We're going to set my layout to a long. I'm going to select the path as, let me move this out of the way so you can see what's going on. 
I'm going to select this path as that offset curve. I want a count of 15, and I want my span to be the entire path. So I'm saying 100% of that path, I want you to take 15 of these and equally space them out across that path. Select OK. Now maybe if a couple of those holes were for aligning pins or uh, if I wanted to change the size, I am able to come in here, double click on the instance I want to change, select the diameter, maybe I want one of them to be a half inch big, and we'll see that the instance that I chose, the diameter updated to be a half inch as opposed to a quarter of an inch. So this is a powerful tool that takes time, you know, saves time for us as far as calculating the position and location of these holes and the distance apart from each other. Maybe another example here we have just like an electrical component. I basically modeled this up from memory. Uh, one of the motorcycles I owned years ago had this thing on the side of it called a voltage regulator. Uh, basically all it was it was a capacitor with a heat sink on top of it. So really all I did to model it up was I have a block here with a couple of tabs on the side with mounting holes and then this thing on the side uh, in the center where the electrical connector comes in. And then I created a sketch on the side and extruded and subtracted that through and now I want to pattern that in this direction in the X direction to create my heat sink. This is going to be a linear layout. I want to select the feature as my extrude. I don't want to have any boundary. I want to specify my vector by that edge. Notice that it's pointing in the other direction. All I have to do is come out here and double click that to flip it. I know that I need 20 of them, 4 millimeters apart. Select OK and it's all automated for me. Notice I don't have to go in there and create those blends again or anything like that. since the blends were part of the sketch and part of that extrude. It patterned that for me. Last example I'd like to take a look at is a little more complex. I do want to show the power of the pattern feature. Let's say here we have kind of a, a common kitchen item, a, a cheese grater. If we zoom up into this shape here we can see how complex it is. Let me show on uh, the hidden lines. We can see there's quite a number of blends that create this shape. There's a chamfer that creates that cutting edge. We are able to pattern that by coming over here to my part navigator and I'm going to select all the features that help to create that shape with the exception of the chamfer and the last three blends that I added. Uh, just in essence of saving time, I'm going to leave those out so that uh, when it goes to calculate this pattern, um, you know, it, it doesn't take as much time since we are limited on time today. So now I have my feature selected that I want to pattern. I can come in here to my associative copy, pattern feature. I want my boundary to be defined by curves. I'm going to come in here and select these inside curves. I'm just getting an alert message over there that's telling me that my boundary isn't closed yet. That's okay because I'm not done picking my curves. Now we can see that uh, the edges highlighted in yellow is what's defining my boundary. I do have simplified boundary fill toggled on. I'm going to use triangle with a pitch distance of two for this example, but I will show you my finished model. I'm creating a, I'm leaving it a larger pitch distance so uh, we have less time to calculate here, 
basically the bulk of the work for me as a designer was put into creating that initial shape and then everything's automated past then. We can see it was able to pattern that shape, like I said, with the exception of the blends and the chamfer. But we do have the ability to do that. And I'll show you the finished part. We can see here that I, I decreased my pitch distance to one inch as opposed to two, which we just looked at. And in this case, I patterned everything that was used to create that shape. My result is, is that it reproduces that shape multiple times in that boundary and creates actually a pretty complex model. So it's a really powerful tool we get to use. Um, you know, it is new in NX8. So we got to look at the different types of patterns, linear, circular, polygon, spiral, a long curve. Uh, the only time thing we didn't get to cover was the general. Basically, when you're in the general command, uh, you get to go in and create a sketch for where I want each instance to be placed. Then we got to take a look at some real-life applications of the pattern feature. Took a look at a machine cover. We also did an electrical component. And then we showed the power of the pattern command by doing a complex model. I'd like to thank you for your attention this afternoon. I hope you found this session informative. Feel free to email me any questions that may have come up during today's session or if you have any suggestions for future Lunch Bite topics. You can also call or email our technical support team with any other questions regarding the NXCAD software. We'd like to be helpful in any way we can. Please join us for our next NX Lunch Bite session, which will be held on September 6th, where we'll be covering flat patterns and one-step formability. We look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.